The United Kingdom strongly condemns the appalling, unprovoked attack President Putin has launched on the people of Ukraine. We continue to stand with Ukraine and continue to support its right to be a sovereign, independent and democratic nation. The United Kingdom and our allies and partners are responding decisively to provide military and humanitarian assistance. This includes weapons that help Ukraine's heroic efforts to defend itself. We have sent over 6,900 new anti-tank missiles, known as NLAWS, a further consignment of Javelin anti-tank missiles, eight air defence systems, including Starstreak anti-air missiles, 1,360 anti-structure munitions and 4.5 tonnes of plastic explosives. Mr Speaker, as Ukraine steadies itself for the next attack, the United Kingdom is stepping up efforts to help its defence. The United Kingdom has confirmed $1.3 billion of new funding for military operations and aid to Ukraine. This includes the £300 million the PM announced on the 3rd of May for electronic warfare equipment, a counter-battery radar system, GPS jamming equipment and thousands of night vision devices. The Mr Speaker, there was no mass mobilisation from President Putin on Monday, but we must now expect this conflict to be long and slow. And the UK now needs to shift from crisis management of the current conflict to delivering the medium-term military support that Ukraine will need for Putin's next offensive. And this means new NATO weapons instead of Soviet-era equipment. The head of the British Army this week has said the army is too small. Despite Conservatives voting down Labour's motion in this House a year ago to halt further cuts, so will he accept there was a defence-shaped hole in the Queen's speech yeah, yeah. and that the Government must now rewrite the integrated review, review defence spending, reform military procurement and rethink army cuts? Yeah. Well, I think we are now at the stage where we are seeing over the coming years the wholesale institutional uh, reinvigoration of the Ukrainian armed forces uh, um, and I think the United Kingdom will have a very central and very proud role uh, at the centre of that institutional uh, rejuvenation of the Ukrainian armed forces. Um, he meant, and in fact we have been proud Mr Speaker uh, to, to be building on our legacy of uh, training involvement which started in 2014 with the hugely success and successful Operation Orbital which trained some 25,000 Ukrainian armed forces. So there's a good legacy of joint working which we will continue uh, to take forward. Thank you. Well, Mr Speaker, I'm very grateful for my honourable friend's question. He's, uh, he uh, pays close attention to these matters and I, I think we have all been clear that our support to Ukraine is something that will I expect to last many years. Uh, we've had a very close defence relationship since 2014. I think we are moving to uh, a phase of the campaign that is attritional and will be, will, will be continued at tragic and significant cost to the Russian state. Uh, we, don't, we can't speculate on how long it might last, but I think we must be prepared for it to last for a very, very long time. And I think we should be reassured by the fact that we and our allies across Western Europe uh, have the resolve to, to, to see this through um, because it's resolve, apart from kit and equipment, resolve is the key ingredient to a successful military campaign. Uh, we have all observed how the Russian armed forces have, uh, are completely absent in terms of the, the, the moral element. And I would be reassured by the fact that throughout NATO and throughout our military and diplomatic alliances in Western Europe, that resolve is shared. And we are much stronger because we are part of, of an amazing alliance. And what's, you, what's different uh, from our position to that of Russia is that they have very few friends.